sounds so good. Welcome to another Cars and Custard video and welcome to what could be my biggest mistake yet. This is my new Range Rover and I don't know whether to be excited or afraid. Now I have been quite cynical with regards to Range Rovers and their owners in the past. Oh, but Jesus handles here as well. If that was a Range Rover and you did that, they would come Oh, the engine would fall out, wouldn't yeah. it? All Range Rover owners need to be counselled. But I thought I ought to try one out before I pass judgment. And to be completely transparent with you, I have got a bit of a Range Rover fetish. Now, I'm not proud of it, but it's true. And there are worse things. At least I don't go around licking people's feet. The thing is with a fetish though, you know it's wrong realistically. I knew buying a Range Rover was wrong and therefore to make me give up my money, it had to be perfect. Unfortunately for me, this one came up and this one was perfect. The spec was absolutely perfect, exactly what I wanted. So the wheels, the body kit, the facelift kit, the color, the interior, even the engine, it was all perfect. And all of this came at the grand sum of 3,000 pound. I mean, £3,000 for a once £75,000, £80,000 car is incredible value for money, isn't it, really? I mean, just look at it. How cool is it? Especially in this spec, it blurs the lines between council estate and country estate perfectly. It's classy bling if there was such a thing. As I'm sure you can tell, I'm very pleased with this purchase, at least so far. Not that it's been reliable yet. Um, but I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it's got a lot of time to prove itself. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll grab the camera and we'll have a look around the car and see what you can get for £3,000. Okay, we are now handheld, so sorry for any shakiness. Now, keen-eyed viewers might have already noticed that it is an 07 plate, um, yet it has all of the 2010 onwards facelift kit. And that is true, it is an 07, um, but it has all of the genuine uh, Range Rover kind of exterior design pack facelift upgrade on it. Um, and it does look the part, it's what sold me on this car really. And I was looking the other day at the classifieds just to feel a little bit better about myself. And uh, the only ones I could find similar to this with this kit on it and these wheels um, were all 20, 20,000 pound upwards. Um, so I'm quite pleased, at least from the look standpoint. These lights are some of the best lights I've used in a car. They are the, I believe they're Xenons, um, but oh my life, in the countryside of a night time where there's no street lamps and you know, you get blinded by lorries and vans and things like that. These are excellent. Uh, you also never get glare. Um, you have obviously the black Land Rover badges, which do really work on this actually. And I believe they're part of the whole uh, refresh, so to speak. Obviously the Range Rover uh, logo in terms of lettering. Uh, but yeah, you have all these kind of nice, um, sturdy bumpers. You don't have the fog lights built into the bumper there. You have them drop down. You have all this kind of knurled chrome effect grill, which I do think looks really, really good. So yeah, um, moving around to the side, obviously these wheels are part of the exterior design package, I believe, um, and they are commonly seen on the Westminster models, which were some of the run out, uh, the run out ones, and some people's favourites. These tyres are um, it's four new ones because when I got it, uh, they were unevenly worn and uh, the brand wasn't to my liking. These are actually a budget tyre. Um, but they're accelerators and they are actually quite good. So yeah, uh, the reason I bought those is because then I can put my money into other things that are uh, needing doing. Anyway, this carried on the uh, this carries on the knurled effect. Um, we have body coloured mirror caps, uh, mirror caps. Sorry, not mirror caps. Uh, I don't like the chrome ones. Um, I think they're a little bit tacky, even though I know they're on the supercharged. We also have colour coded. Uh, door handles, which once again, I love. I don't like the standard kind of plastic one, well not plastic, the kind of vinyl ones, and I don't like the chrome ones once again. This does have side steps, um, and I'm sure a lot of people will say, oh, you need to get those off, you need to get those off. Well, why? It's a Range Rover, it's not a Defender. I'm not gonna be doing rock crawling or green laning in it. So uh, yeah, and they are actually quite useful. My Nan is the size of Yoda, and she, this makes her, uh, get in the car. So um, yeah, this here, this roof strip, this weathering strip, I'll see if I can point it out, this here, um, some scrote stole it. Um, so I had to order a new one from eBay. Um, and yeah, I'll put 
uh, that in my next video, which is a one month cost of ownership update on this car, um, which will interest a few of you. But overall, it's honestly not bad. Um, the rust isn't the best, uh, so we have rust here, excuse my shoddy jet wash job, but as I say, the rust is forming there and it's starting to bubble all the way around and it gets worse when you open the door unfortunately, as you can see, that is bad. Um, so I'm going to get that done because that does annoy me, I love rust but not on this thing. Um, it, what it is, I think, is this kind of seal um, here, which I don't know if you can see, but it runs down the hole of the door and it just traps dirt. And I think, obviously, that's where it sits. So I'm sure that's probably why. Um, I hear that door shut, it's so solid. But yeah, with the exterior design pack, I believe you also get these kind of um, flared uh, door trim too. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure, to be honest clear glass something i really really wanted but on these supercharged variants you can really really find it most people want to look like p diddy not the queen so yeah carrying on around to the rear we have the updated lights once again really good and they look excellent when they're on uh, you might notice somebody somebody's debadged it on the rear uh, and that's because some idiot though you can see the magnitude of that but some idiot reversed this into something now how on earth they did that i don't know because these pillars are quite thin actually for a modern car they're quite thin you can see each corner of this car there's a reversing camera it's not hard to maneuver so how on earth they've done that i don't know um but i'm gonna have to get that sorted as well unfortunately this might pull out um but this certainly won't and obviously the badges have been taken off maybe as a result of that i don't know or maybe they just didn't like the badges the previous owner did say the range of badges are in the armrest but i can only see a rover badge um and i don't want that once again black land rover badges you have this really nice trim piece as well um I say 07 plate. Now, I have ordered some plates for this. I'm going to put my private registration on. Um, but if you kind of look, it needs filling out because this is a regular size plate. And you can get an oversized one, which fills that gap a lot better. Um, down here, you've got the kind of exterior design. I believe this kit's called the Exclusive Exterior Design Kit. Um, and as you can see, it's quite nice lower rear valance with this chunky rear bumper. Um, these exhausts corrode like mad. I don't know why. Um, you can replace them, but they're an absolute fortune. They don't really bother me, to be honest. So I think I'm just going to leave them. Once again, clear glass in the rear. Um, yeah, this side is what worries me, actually. Um, you can't really see with the lighting, but there's a bit of rust there, but it's actually not too bad going around here. But when you open the door, are you ready? Look at this. So you get it all the way down here. It's not actually as bad as the other one. Until you get down here, in which case you can see that is a hole. So it's going to need some welding, which I will get done reluctantly. Um, I could just put some tape over it and it'd probably go through an MOT. And I don't think it's actually too bad through the sill, uh, but I'd like to get it done. So yeah, we've got side steps here again. I have actually bought some rear mud flaps, um, which were a pain to find because obviously they're specific to the rear bumper, which is quite a rare piece of kit. But yeah, overall, it's actually not too bad. The front end's really clean, obviously, because it's been facelifted. Um, so there's like no stone chips on it or anything. Um, but the, the bodywork is actually really straight, to be honest. Um, there's no real big dents or um, scratches down the surface. It's literally just that rear dent um, and obviously the rust that need doing. Apart from that, though, it's fairly clean. One of the best parts about a full fat Range Rover is a split folding tailgate. So you obviously lift the upper section up. Uh, there is a trim piece missing there, which is very annoying. I don't know how anybody snapped that off, but I need a replacement. And then it's slightly dropped down there, um, which, oh well, we can sort that. You can see the damage there. Really don't know how anybody's done that either. But yeah, so you press this and then obviously this bottom one drops down. This can hold 300 kilos or around about 661 pounds. Um, so I'll be okay sitting on it if I want to. Um, as you can see, I can sit on it. Um, but some of the uh, gentlemen from the Range Rover owners group on Facebook, they probably won't be able to. Um, so yeah, 
uh, beware of that but it's a fantastic size and the great thing is there's no real intrusions into the boot space I don't know whether you can see in this light um, but it's a very very good size boot and you get these kind of cutouts um, to store toolkits and things like that so yeah great size all seats fold down um, and they can actually fold back up onto themselves which is good so yeah great size boot uh, really ideal for any kind of work that you need to put this thing through can't find the there we go so yeah and every time i do that a bit of this paint chips off from underneath so i do need to be careful before we take the car outside to have a look at the interior and take it for a drive um let's just have a look under the bonnet at this the masterful 4.2 litre supercharged V8 seen in most of the hot mid noughties Jaguars like the XJR and the XKR um, and I think this engine is the best choice for this car which I will explain in a video probably not the next video but the video after in which I will do my unprofessional Range Rover buyer's guide um, but yeah that engine is oh, it's a masterpiece I absolutely love it and I would argue the most reliable engine they've put in these besides maybe the other Jaguar V8 the other the petrol one um, people won't like to hear that but it's true so yeah uh, 400 brake horsepower 560 newton meters of torque as well so plenty power for this big thing anyway let's move it outside and use the side step to get in so i don't damage the bolster let's move it outside and have a look around the interior then we'll take it out for a quick spin get the squealy double glazed windows right and then you get all the warning lights in the world uh, i've got a tire pressure monitoring um system fault which is i believe the rear left so i'm going to sort that and that flashes away for the first five minutes um obviously the battery and all light will go out as with the seat belt light um the check engine light only came on this morning um and that's because i jet washed it what that has to do with it i don't know but anyway you get the key relocated here on the 2007 through 2009 variants. Anyway, start it up. Oh, it just sounds so good. And that's what none of the diesels can do. They just cannot sound like that. Right. So, let's just... Put it outside into the light a little bit just so we can see what we're actually looking at. Okie doke, here we go. I'll knock the engine off. Put the squealy window back up again. Lovely. Okie dokie. Interior. This is where the Range Rover shines um, and shine it does. It's so nice in here. Um, it's just a lot nicer than a KN or an X5 or a Q7 or anything like that. Um, it just feels like more of a special place to be. And you have all this kind of nice metal um, extending onto the gear knob um, all around the vents. It's just, it's a lovely, lovely place to be. Um, this leather is so soft and comfortable. Um, with that said, it does obviously wear quite easily I and mean, get dirty quite easily because it's so light. It's like a really light ivory. Um, I have actually started to recondition this. Um, it was much worse than this when I bought it. So hopefully it can come back to how it should be. Um, but yeah, there are little bits of wear like there and on the armrest. But it's stuff I'd probably do to it if it wasn't done already. Uh, see a little black Land Rover badge. Steering wheel, I'm probably going to get retrimmed because it's a little bit sticky at the top. Um, it's not too bad overall though. You have got a heated steering wheel as well, which is really good on cold mornings. Um, automatic lights down here. You've got obviously the piano black accent. Uh, I'm glad there's not more of that really because it does get quite um, dusty. But yeah, automatic lights uh, and they're, they all work with the updated lights as well. But yeah, overall it's all very nice. All the materials are very nice. You've got leather dash. Um, the later cars, which I would recommend going for, um, are 
fact signified by these uh, vents on top of the dash the earlier ones don't have that um, some 06s do uh, but they're a little bit weird and I would stay clear of them simply because they're like a crossover year uh, between BMW and Ford um, I personally would want a Ford a full Ford uh, model year car like this one 2007 onwards anyway we'll take it out for a quick drive and you'll join me on the road You know, I don't think I've ever owned a car which is quite as relaxing as this. Every time I get in it, my shoulders drop, my arms fall naturally into place, and I'm ready to pilot this mobile relaxation station. Now, I'd be lying if I told you it hasn't already had faults. In the three or four weeks that I've had it, um, the on night one, the front right airbag split, um, scaring the living of my girlfriend who was standing outside the car whilst I was showing off uh, the air suspension uh, but yeah as soon as he went into off-road mode there was a loud, really loud pshh, and uh, yeah scared the at her um, so it was worth it for the entertainment but not for the cost unfortunately um, two nights after that or three nights after that um, the other side went um, I should have followed Oh, I should have gone with my gut and had that one done um, but I didn't so you live and learn so I had to get that one done so now it's back from that and fingers crossed I should actually be able to use it now um, without the worry of either of the front um, air suspension units going wrong uh, but yeah so I mean if you want to know about what I've kind of spent on this already and um, within the first month then uh, subscribe and turn on the bell icon because my next video is going to be my one month cost of ownership um, on this car and I think it might interest a few of you and obviously I will continue doing those throughout the months uh, there's going to be a few more videos on this car and whatnot so so it should be the gift that keeps on giving for YouTube really because and that's probably why so many people buy them on the platform it's because they constantly go wrong so yeah uh, I fancy my I fancy having a go at it so I reckon I might be able to do a little bit better than a few other YouTubers with it because I reckon this 4.2 supercharged engine is the one that you want so yeah um, but no it hasn't been cheap and it hasn't been without its issues but I do love it Anyway, back to the good stuff. The Range Rover does something that not a lot of cars can do. It completely isolates you from the stressful outer world. Anything that's not between these four pillars doesn't bother me, doesn't affect me. This is double glazed. I'm nice and high up. So, you know when van drivers and their friends kind of look down at you as if to say, we're gonna get you? No, the window licking van or bus people can't do that because you're at their level. Um, so yeah, it, it just it gives you that kind of ivory tower kind of feeling. It turns you into a snob, to be honest. Um, maybe the ivory tower feeling is due to this lovely ivory leather, or maybe it's just down to that commanding driving position. Either way, you do feel like you're successful. It's also soft and lovely in here, from the ride quality to these beautiful contoured seats. It's like being on a cloud up in the sky with the ride quality of magic carpet. It's like a little slice of heaven. I love it, I really, really do love it. And quite frankly, if it drains my pockets, I still don't think I could be mad at it because this still feels like a 75,000 pound car to me. This makes me as happy as a new Range Rover would. So, yeah, it might be an awkward one, but drain me if you need to because I absolutely love it. So what's my plan with this car then? Well, it's actually my daily driver at the moment. Uh, now I can use the Passat that I did a video on recently, um, if worse comes to worse, which I'm sure it will at some point, uh, as it already has twice. But uh, it is my daily driver and I do intend to kind of restore it, so to speak, back to a great cosmetic and mechanical condition. So yeah, hopefully um, I can do that before the car beats me to a financial pulp. Just imagine, it's like a big game of cat and mouse, isn't it? Can I fix things before they go wrong? Can I avoid bankruptcy? Should I be sectioned? All questions that will probably be answered in my ownership with this car. For a while now, my favorite YouTube series or videos have been people who buy old, cheap Range Rovers for little money and then ruin themselves financially. 
Um, but I always find it interesting to see how different people approach the spectacle of old Range Rover ownership. And I hope I can approach things a little bit differently to the others um, for the sake of your entertainment, but also for the sake of my wallet. Uh, I trust that this car might not be as ruinous as some people would think. I'm sure those are my famous last words, aren't they? But it's the right engine, it's the right year, and I've paid the right money for it, so there's a lot left in reserve. My voice is going now. The other thing about Range Rover, nobody tells you. Everybody lets you out. I don't know why, I don't know whether it's just because it's in the countryside, but everybody seems to let you through. Whereas when I had my Porsche, nobody did that. Or in an X5, nobody ever does it. Whereas in this old thing, they let you straight through. Every time I get out of this car, I look back at it. Sometimes I snap a few photos of it, and it makes me think these L322s are just aging so well. Some would say that they are the last proper Range Rover, and I might have to agree. As great as the shape is after this, it kind of lost its boxy, rugged appeal. It still has the luxury, but I quite like the idea that it's right at home on a farm as well as do many other people. I do actually think I've saved this car. I've got a feeling in this black spec with the nice wheels, the nice body kit, I've got a feeling this would have gone to somebody who would have just tinted the windows and ran around in it. They wouldn't have changed all four tyres. They wouldn't have had the airbags done. They would have just drove around until the compressor gave up. And that's the thing with a lot of these Range Rovers of this era. And they're being owned by people who can't necessarily afford to own a Range Rover. And that's not right, is it? Don't live beyond, beyond your means. You know, I bought this cheap because I knew it would need work doing, but then I knew one at £6,000 would need work doing. I knew one at £10,000 would need work doing. But I just bought the one that I wanted and I'll fix it when it goes wrong. I believe Matt at High Peak Auto said that, but I could be wrong. He is known to come up with a lot of inspirational quotes. Should we talk about that supercharged V8? I think we should. Now, most people will advise you to go for the TDV8, but I will be doing a kind of buyer's guide, if you can call it that, if I can be all professional. Um, but I will be doing a buyer's guide to explain why I think you should go for this supercharged engine. Um, but in short, the fuel economy isn't that much worse if you don't drive it like a dick. But this engine is an absolute masterpiece. Now, let's just, ready? so smooth it is so smooth and it's properly quick as well that's the thing I overtook a tractor the other day and because I drive it normally nine times out of ten I completely forgot the power was there so I buried my foot into the accelerator pedal and I kind of in a way it was a bit too aggressive for its own good um, because I was thinking I had to prepare it for a long overtake and it just shot past this tractor punting me down the road in this massive penthouse of a vehicle. Can you hear how quiet this is? It's just silent. These double glazed windows mean that you are completely isolated from the outside world. Absolutely fantastic for somebody as antisocial as I am. I really do fear that I've been bitten by the Range Rover bug. It's just so addictive. This could ruin my life like heroin ruins a regular addict's life but I'm not complaining as long as this thing works I'm a happy boy just look at that view now the one of the benefits of being so high up is I can admire that three grand I paid for this now I'm not three grand into it but ultimately this item, the product itself, was three grand. It has to be the bargain of the century, right? I mean, am I missing something? Yeah, the upkeep is going to be huge, but it's still such a lovely product at the end of it. That's, I don't, what I don't understand is if I pay 3,000 pounds for this and it gulps up 7,000 pounds in the next two years, so to speak, I'm still, only £10,000 into a sorted L322. 
and that still strikes me as excellent value for money. Anyway, I think I'm going to end the video there um, because it's starting to get a little bit dark and I want to get home. Um, although, to be honest, I feel like I'm already at home in my nice lounge chair. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, please like, comment what you want me to do with this car um, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of it because there will be a lot of content on the back of this video with this car. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.